Welcome to Monet Cafe, my artistic friends, visitors, and subscribers, and I'm very happy to be bringing you another In the Beginner series videos. This one I'm calling Pushing Color. I often get questions from you guys as to how do I get more dynamic color in my artwork or reinterpret the colors that are in a reference photo that may be a little dull or you know something you just want to change a bit and so in this video I hope to share with you and answer many of your questions as to um, some tips on how to accomplish that. Now here's a quick image of some of the pastels I used and I will go into that in more detail but first a precious little moment I didn't even realize I captured Many of you know that my little art kitty, Dusty, who showed up in my front yard like a little drowned rat about a year ago, was hit by a car the other day, and I can't even talk about it very much because it'll make me cry. But also, too, I'm wearing one of my um, t-shirts here, and uh, just so you know, these t-shirts, the Happy Painting t-shirts, the um, Art All Colors Welcome, and a few others are available underneath my YouTube videos. There's just some little links to those if you're interested. Here were my initial pastel selections, and I apologize for the um, focus, autofocus trying to focus there. Um, but as you could tell by the final painting, if you recall, I, I did add some blues, of course, for the sky. But I, in this painting, I chose to keep the greens and everything a little cooler. And to do that, I really wanted to do a combination of these beautiful lavender purples and those cooler greens. And if you notice, like right here, I think this is a Jack Richardson pastel. I chose a lot of neutrals. See, even this is a neutral. And um, I just, I don't know, I had it in my mind to create a neutral palette and then just have a few colors that were a little more bold. And all, just so you know, neutral colors, just think of a, a kind of as dull colors. They don't have as much brilliance or bright color. Now here I'm using a piece of Sennelier Le Carte paper. It's called Pastel Card. It's very rough in texture. And um, I like that. It keeps me very impressionistic, but uh, it is not water friendly. So you don't want to apply watercolor or anything with water as an underpainting. I did have a question the other day, which is a great question. I actually forgot at the end of the last video I did that I was working on Sennelier and I, I brushed off. I showed how you can actually erase pastels with a bristle brush. And um, I used some spray fixative that I often do um, when I want to get more grit. And forgetting that it was Sennelier Le Carte card and you're not really supposed to use water but the just so you know the spray fixative worked great on this it didn't warp the paper it didn't affect it in any way so I kind of made a happy discovery there so to my knowledge and from my experience uh, you can use uh, workable fixative <clears throat> with the Sennelier Le Carte uh, card. I pardon my voice if it's a little raspy. Some of you have followed how my husband and I have been sick from the mold issue we had in our house. <coughs> and we just recently had all of our floors redone. It was like a miracle that, you know, I thank you for all your prayers. We got a lot of that accomplished and, and it's just so great. So I've got a lot going on right now, but I, I did want to share. This is actually a painting that I did um, weeks ago and just had the footage. So let me actually talk about what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm using a, it's just kind of a dark, warm, I believe this might be a new pastel. It's a, just a harder little pastel. You can use whatever pastel you want, but get a darker value, medium dark value. And all you're doing here, all I'm doing is blocking in shapes. I often use the side of the pastel because I don't want detail at this point. I'm just getting a composition. And the more you do this, the more you learn to see the big shapes. Right now here, you can see I'm working on the, the shadow. There is a shadow being cast from that tree, and that's going to enhance that composition to give some interest at the beginning and just kind of draw the eye in. Um, now, if you notice underneath, I have the reference photo up to the top right there, and that actually is my photo from... Um, a little piece of land and property that we have we hope to build a house on it one day we're still kind of in temporary living conditions but um uh, i love that field it's just so beautiful but underneath it is what's called a value study or a no tan and all it is is a, a quick little drawing that's just uh the values to get the composition and the values correct and in the beginning of the video series, you'd have to go back about, oh gosh, probably five or six, maybe more videos, where I, I started the beginner series with how to do these no tans, these little value studies. They are very important um, if you want to 
uh, really create a good roadmap to where your painting's going to go. And they're kind of fun, you know, it just um, relax, enjoy, do a lot of them. Don't take them too seriously. And the more you do, the better you'll get. Um, so I'm even putting in, there are values in the clouds. I mean, we have a tendency to think of uh, clouds in the sky as white, but I'm now doing the, the blue part of the sky in between the clouds. And again, I'm not thinking about these being clouds. I'm just kind of squinting my eyes and looking at where the blue shapes are in the clouds. And uh, the more you can get your mind away from what am I painting and zone out and just look at the shapes and the values. That's one of the greatest things you can do, especially at the beginning stages of a painting, is to focus on big shapes and values and work all over the painting. I get some good questions about how do I get a more impressionistic feel and that's exactly one of the ways you can do that is don't get too tied into one area of the painting too quickly. Um, get those big shapes and values in to begin with. Keep it very loose and free and that will help. Now here are three of my darker values that I'm using. I don't know what I'm holding my finger up for. Oh I added one. <laughs> um, I've got in um, the purples that I said I wanted to create a color palette that was more of a cooler um, color temperature with purples and teals and so that's why I'm using some of these purples as uh, dark colors that I'm putting down and shadows that I'm putting down. Okay now I added and again sorry for the focus one of the blues that blue is going to be some of the blues in the sky that I have. Um, and most of those, the one, the purple one on the far left is a Terry Ludwig, and then the two, or two in the middle there, were Jack Richeson's. They're a little bit harder than Terry Ludwig's or Sennelier's, um, and let's see what this one is. Yeah, that's the one I'm, that I'm going to use, basically, to get the darker dark. So I'm just going to go over what I've already done and get in, because that's all kind of just general, and now I know that the things that are closer to the foreground, if you look at the reference photo um, and even my Notan sketch, uh, the trees that are closer in the foreground, the one closest to me is going to be the one on the far left and the one I'm working on right now is a little further back but it's still very dark. It's going to be the darkest value. And I talk often about how in pastels and actually even oils and acrylics, we typically work dark to light. You want to get your dark values down first because you can add lighter values on top of those. And um, that's opposite of watercolor. And watercolor, you want to work light to dark. You want to preserve those lights because you really, in watercolor, you can't really get them back. I mean, you can use some gouache or some other things to maybe get the white back to a degree, but it's never the same as that beautiful, brilliant white paper in a watercolor painting. So that's the opposite of pastels. So, um, and I typically work in value layers. Now see, I'm picking something that's a little bit of a lighter value. Notice how that's, it's a little more dulled um, down in color and see how I'm pointing at those are where um, the trees that are a little further away, notice that particular pastel, it's a little grayer and it's lighter in value. If you squint your eyes, it's not as dark as that purple that I put down. So I'm going to be using that for those distant trees or the, the next layer or level of trees and also I believe like for some of the shadows in there, okay? So at this point I'm just working the values. Like I said, the first thing I did was just to get an initial big shapes in with one color pastel and then next is to get my values established very loosely and uh, keep it loose and free and um, keep focusing on big, big shapes and not too much fussy detail. Okay, now I think I'm comparing some of the other, yep, I think that one's going to end up being too light um, for the, yeah, there we go. Um, the more distant trees are going to be a shade lighter in value than the middle um, ground trees that I just did. So as you can see, just with these three values, um, not counting the, the one that I did for the kind of underpainting sketch, these three values are going to give an illusion of distance. And I just think that's what's so cool about art. It's really like magic. And I always say, not like dark magic, that's not what I mean, like um, illusion magic. I was always fascinated by that as a child. As a matter of fact, 
I did magic. Um, I My dad one time went to some convention he had gone to and there was a shop that had some magic um, tricks and he brought them home to me and I studied them and I just loved it. And I got into it so much that he actually um, found a place that taught illusionary art and I took lessons there and I ended up having my own little show at like, oh gosh, what was I, 11 years old? Uh, my maiden name is Moss, and I was Magical Moss, and I had my little suitcase of tricks. I even had ones with, with fire. It's called flash paper, and I did birthday parties and school things, and, and it was a lot of fun. I just loved the idea of creating something that was an illusion, that would trick your mind, and that's really kind of what art is. We're tricking the mind to uh, imagine or see a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional surface and so the neat thing is that's really all these things are is they're tricks and um, not bad tricks but fun tricks and so when you can learn those tricks I, I really think anybody can paint now of course we know there are some people that have these God-given gifts that they just see it and they get it faster and they do it more quickly but if you if you love it and you want to try it you can definitely learn to paint um, it definitely takes practice and um, patience and a lot of work. And I know at the beginning stages you get frustrated and there's times where you feel like, I can't do this and why am I even trying? And, and please, I did the same thing. I still do that sometimes when I get frustrated and go, what am I thinking? I'm, this is terrible. But um, those are just you know parts of it, of the whole process. That's the same with anything. It's the same with music or any kind of thing you do. Oh, I'm sorry, I step on this side of the painting. Sometimes I need to get to the other side and I'm left-handed and I actually think it, I think I had my pajamas on at this. I got up early in the morning. I love early morning paintings. That's just some of my favorite. Now, you can see here all the colors that I've chosen thus far are cooler in temperature, okay? I've got purples and blues, and I'm not getting over detailed or crazy with color. Now, I'm using that lighter, the little bluish, um, grayish one um, for the clouds, even though I think I lighten them up whiter later I'm just getting those shapes in with I've what have I got like four or five values that I've gotten in here so far and so once you get that done then you can start getting a little bit more um, serious with color or um, um, more uh, particular with your color selections and choices so okay let me um i'm going to speed this up just a bit to finish this uh initial this is kind of by the way like the underpainting you know a lot of other paintings i do especially if i'm using uart paper i may do a watercolor underpainting a gouache underpainting an acrylic underpainting a um a, what are they called neo color wax pastel underpainting there's so many different different ways you can do that but for this sennelier paper i often because it doesn't take water just do an underpainting with pastels okay and again if you're very new to this all an underpainting is is exactly what i'm doing here getting in your big shapes your values and covering that big expanse or in this case it's not a very big piece of paper but covering the paper so that you have a a goal or a um, a road map for where the rest of your painting will go. All right, now my big head's in the way again. Now, I've got a little bit of a darker lavender purple value, and I'm just working that in areas that would have that medium dark um, tone. And all of these are going to kind of peek through the grasses that I lay on top. And that's another, I said I was going to speed this up and pause. I, I can't quit talking today. <laughs> but um, all of this is going to establish a mood and a little bit of color that's going to peek through the rest of the painting when you add the greens. Um, oh, and that's what I was going to say is another key thing, uh, especially at these beginning stages, well, really the whole time, is to keep a light touch. Don't press down so hard um, that you lose your grit of your paper. And uh, at the end, you know, sometimes you can do, I like how Karen Margulis says it, sh you can do shouting marks when you've got your final uh, images that you want to make the most impact, whether it be some flowers or whatever, th that's going to be your main focus in your painting. But before you get to that point, you want to keep all of your strokes very soft and uh, not press too hard. Another reason for that, okay, see now I've gone to a more bold in color 
darker value. Now, what do we know about bolder colors or more intense with their uh, chroma? Uh, is that those colors are typically closer to us. I wouldn't want to use that purple way in the background because I'm going to lose the illusion of things being far away. What do we know about our eyes? When things are really far away from us, you don't see the color that vividly and um, they're not as dark. They're, they pale out and the reason for that is because even though you can't see the atmosphere, the air, it's there and when things get further away you have a lot of atmosphere in a layer between you and what the object is that's far away think of distant mountains why do they always look blue because things cool off in the distance because of all the atmosphere between your eyes and the distant things so they cool off they get lighter in value and they get duller in color and again if you can remember those three things about um how to achieve that illusion of distance that is definitely going to help you and now I've, I've basically got my underpainting done so what I'm gonna go and do now is reestablish or establish the darkest darks in this painting and again that's going to bring those trees a little more forward I believe I don't think that's a Terry um, Ludwig uh, eggplant that's a, a purple color a really really dark purple color um, that works great for darks. No, this one's a little too gray. I think the first one I put down may have been the eggplant, um, but this is just a darker Terry Ludwig. And these are very soft, so I'm keeping a soft touch so as not to fill up the tooth of the sandpaper. And if you're very, very new to this, I mean, why do we use sanded paper for pastels? Well, if you put pastels on regular, just flat drawing paper, you can't get any layering because they, they don't stick on top of each other. The sandpaper allows for some tooth for the pastels to hold on to, and it allows for layering of different colors. So that's why sanded papers are the best types of surfaces to use with soft pastels. Oh, another thing I wanted to point out too, another reason why you keep a light touch and uh, don't over layer um, or over muddy your, your painting um, is because the more layers you put down, the harder you press and the harder you rub, you lose the brilliance of the pastel color. Um, it's like, um, I was trying to remember something that I read. Uh, I can't remember if it's like crystals within the pastels, but something that has this brilliance of color where the light just kind of reflects. And the more you muddy that, the more you blend, the more you rub, the more you layer, the more you lose that. And all of a sudden you're colors become muddy. If you've done this a little while and uh, you may, you probably have experienced when you're like, man, how did my painting get so, so dull looking? And it's because you've overworked it. And trust me, I have done that many times too. So that's why learning to keep a, a light touch and um, be a, a bit more purposeful with your strokes uh, now, there's a fine line between that because sometimes you want to be loose. You want your strokes to be free, but not so free that you have to correct and correct and correct. And then before you know it, you've lost that beauty of color that is really one of the beautiful benefits of pastel paintings. Um, if you, I, I often am able to do this. I'm able to, because I videotape my paintings, I'm able to see points when I'm doing these voiceovers sometimes where I'm like, oh man, I... I wish I had not overworked that area because I can see where I kind of lost some of the brilliance of color. Now I'm still at the very beginning stages of this one, so um, I'm still good. Now I wouldn't want to overwork those trees that I just added the dark, but really there's not a whole lot more to do to those. I'm just going to add a couple more values of um, or colors of green. I'm going to add a darker green and then a lighter green for some of the lighter um, leaves. If you notice the trees are very dark but I, I do want to kind of give some impression of some leaves on the trees. Uh, and always we um, we know or I talk a lot about how this is not about creating every branch, every leaf, uh, leaf on the tree. Uh, our brains kind of put that together um, it's, I think it's something called closure, where your mind sees something even if it's not there, if it resembles something. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to make mention a special, special thank you to my patrons. Um, I'll try to give you the short version. I, I started a Patreon page about, it's been a month maybe, but um, 
per a lot of your suggestions you wanted to support me and I'm so grateful but I felt so bad that we had so many life challenges after that that I haven't been able to do much but bless your heart so many of you actually I got more of you become my patrons after you knew of many of our challenges that are going on in life right now and God bless you that is just so beautiful to me um, but I wanted to thank you because because of you I was able to buy a studio light I really really wanted and this video does not have that light it was be I created this before I got that light and I can tell such a difference now when I'm creating a video um, than I did before I mean the light is so much better it makes the colors more like what it really is so thank you patrons for helping me and just so you know I am about to um, move to be with my mom um, during her battle with cancer and she is going to be having radiation it looks like so far hopefully no chemo and I'll be I'll probably be gone for at least at least two months but probably more like three months I'm going to take as many art supplies as I can with me she lives on a beautiful place and uh, hopefully create still be creating some videos so I ask that you do bear with me uh, please stay subscribed to the YouTube channel patrons I promise I will be bringing you guys some content as soon as we can um, get that uh, battle overcome and accomplished and I am having faith that my mom will be cancer free and you can see here as I've been talking that I've been adding those cooler purples that I showed the pastel palette at the beginning and I I really wanted to create that cooler um, under painting mood or tone before I get to my green so you notice every color I've used so far has been on the cooler side of the color wheel cooler in color temperature and if you're not familiar with what that means warm versus cool colors I have on the YouTube channel <clears throat> if you look up top above the videos you'll see um, little tabs and one of them says videos and one says playlists and what playlists are are little files or um, like file folders or whatever that I can put videos of a certain category together and so if you click on playlist uh, I think a, a video pops up but you'll see on the right all the different playlists somehow it works like that um, I haven't looked at it in a while I just put them together so you'll see one playlist that has to do with color or color theory something like that um, but in those you'll be able to see um, a few videos where I go over the color wheel and talk about warm versus cool colors now in those background trees there I thought it was a little too light what I just put down I'm trying to get a cooler uh, bluish green I don't want a warm green back there because what happens in the distance things cool off so I want to get duller cooler um, lighter value tones back there so still still all on the cooler end but now <clears throat> I'm adding some of those coolers where the grounds a little bit lighter um, or kind of in between those shadows a little bit um, and what that's doing is kind of creating a color harmony um, I actually do end up if you, if you squint your eyes I have to end up darkening that foreground a little bit more it's a little bit too light compared to the background field there okay so now I'm creating color harmony by putting some of what's in the earth in the sky often the the sky and the ground play upon each other and you may not always see this in photographs or even with your real eye but as artists we can accentuate that and um, and that's another thing you know the point of this video is how do you push color or or get a more dynamic color or I wish I had the best word for it just more uh, interesting color in your painting and that's one way to do it is by realizing um, that we need to keep a color harmony in our painting and uh, it, it makes the painting more cohesive and just beautiful as a whole uh, rather than segregating certain parts of it uh, okay so now I believe I am choosing some of the um, more green I'm getting a little bit warmer you notice that's a more of a green than a blue and uh, I apologize again for getting my head in the way let me see if I can uh, get past this part here all right so now I'm, I'm trying to make this footage to where I'm kind of avoiding my head so I'm sorry if it's chopping around a little bit so now I'm getting in a little bit more of my greens and I didn't really want to have a lot of tall grasses in this one I think I do 
at the end make some of them right at the entrance um, but for the most part I just want to draw the eye back through that field okay now as you can see I've got it's more of a green that I'm going to put on top of that purple the medium value purple that I put down before notice my strokes I'm not covering up all of that purple I'm just kind of glazing over it and making some um, some tree shapes you know not um, not over um, pressing this or overworking it and um, so that already too you can see now those really do look like they're kind of in the middle ground so while I have this pastel in my hand I'm looking at anywhere else that might have that similar value and remember how I said I, I knew I needed to darken that foreground a little bit um, to bring it forward to make it look more like it's it's closer to you and so this um, still staying in the cooler side of the color palette uh, color wheel um, but that definitely brought that foreground forward. Do you see how that happened? Just by putting that darker, medium value, I should say, um, cooler green in the foreground. Okay, here is where I'm, the trees I have in the back there, the, when I put down that light value, lavender or whatever it was, they were, they were a little too light. Um, so I needed to darken them up just a tad. I think I do end up uh, even bluing them out a little bit more, but they were a little bit too pale. They were there was not enough contrast Yeah, now I'm paling them out a little bit more There was not enough contrast between the trees and the sky that I know was going to be kind of light too So I wanted them to be a darker value than the sky because you can see that in the reference photo and also too in the reference photo You don't see the the really light far far trees like I am um, interpreting or, or taking my artistic license, I always like to try to make more distance if I can in a painting. If I can peek a little place where there can be some trees real far away, it just really creates more interest. Okay, now it's where I'm doing a little bit more vertical strokes. I've got more of a, it's a warmer green. You see that warmer green going on top of, I've already put down lavender. I've put down a cooler green. Uh, medium value green and now just that little bit of warm green there just really gave that um, feeling of grasses okay now continue to watch here while I build up the painting a little bit I am going to speed it up just a tad and uh, I'm going to come back in for more commentary most likely when I get to the clouds all right enjoy I'd add here that here's where I'm actually adding some of the lighter values well they're not light they're still darker values but the the green values on top of the darkest purple um, values that I put down originally or whatever dark color that was but see how these are medium to dark greens I'm still keeping it a little cooler uh, because remember at the beginning that was my interpretation of the photo is I'm pushing color towards the cooler end of the color wheel and um, I do end up warming it up a bit more at the end but but that that's exactly the license that you can take once you understand color and how the color wheel works and um, how color works together um, you can uh, 
make your own interpretation of things. So that's always really fun to do and we're not bound then by the photo. Okay, see how I'm adding on the tips there or the where the sunlight may be kind of wrapping around um, a little bit. Uh, you're getting some of the lighter greens on the tips of the branches or the leaves of the trees. Um, so now I'm just continuing to establish this and okay, now I'm getting to the sky. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting in kind of the, the medium blue values right now uh, in between the clouds. And I had already gotten those purples down, which again makes more of a cohesive painting to kind of play off those purples that are still kind of peeking through in the rest of the painting. And um, so I'm just kind of uh, building up the clouds, again, based on shapes and value. That's all it is. Don't let clouds freak you out. They're just shapes and value. And um, now I'm getting a little bit of a lighter blue. And if you look at the reference photo, this is where, usually in clouds, the underside is a little bit darker. Um, it kind of depends on where the sun is, of course. But, you know, in this case, sometimes uh, clouds have a little bit of water in them. And so that usually is um, uh, reflected by the, the value being a little bit darker underneath. Um, so that little bit of a darker blue that I have under that kind of uh, emulates that or creates that feeling. So um, again, just looking at the value, getting the lighter, um, lighter bluer. It's not even a white that I'm using here. And by the way, I, I keep meaning to do a video where color is, and I think I have pointed this out in multiple video, but color and value is dependent on what it's around. Um, if you have a light color or you just have a, a medium value, and you put a dark background around it, it's going to look lighter. If you put a light background around it, it's going to look darker. It's the same value, but it, how we interpret it in our minds depends on what's around it. Now I'm gonna continue to paint here and put some music on. I'm gonna speed it up just a tad, just so the video is not so long. And uh, I encourage you though, to continue to watch the process. I know the commentary is very helpful, especially when you're new, but it's also incredibly helpful just to watch and, um, and, and see the process and see how I layer things. And um, also too, I wanted to reiterate the point of this video is how we can take something a reference whether you're painting from a reference image or doing plein air painting out on location and how if you can learn some rules of color you can re reinterpret the color palette um, to your own interpretation of it and uh, that could have been done with this photo I decided to go to a cooler I don't know why I just felt that way maybe it was my mood or something but towards a cooler uh, overall painting but I could have gone warmer too even though this photo has all this green and is mostly just trees and grasses uh, and I've done that in many videos before where I I punch up the color from the warm side of the color wheel and so those are the wonderful um, creative licenses you guys can have um, to be able to do that yourselves so it often uh, one of the things I wanted to point out it helps though to have a plan uh, at the very beginning, look at it, interpret it, pull out your color wheel, look at it and go, hmm, what am I trying to say here? What mood do I want to create? And then make a plan. And my plan started at the very beginning when I picked out those cooler um, color temperatures to be the kind of the base or the underpainting of my, of my final painting. And so uh, those things do help when you want to push color or reinterpret color um, to suit your um, own mood or your own creative concept of what you want to um, establish or represent. So enjoy the rest of this process and I again want to thank you guys all so much for your patience uh, on the YouTube channel, in the Monet Cafe Art Group Facebook group, and also my patrons, my precious patrons who Oh my goodness, I just, I know I go on and on about it, but I am just so blessed and so humbled at your support and helping me out during this trial. And uh, again, I'll be uh, headed north, uh, North Florida anyway, and uh, getting uh, lots of 
beautiful photography too. I plan to take a lot of uh, reference images. I think I'm going to share some of those images with um, the Patreon group and uh, maybe while I'm out there create some little uh, painting challenges um, for the Patreon group to work from some of my reference photos. So that sounds like a fun thing to do. So I'll still be around. Um, pardon me if I'm not able to respond to so many comments and things like I try to do. And um, uh, I just keep my mom in your prayers. I feel very optimistic um, being a cancer survivor myself. Uh, I kind of know the drill and some of the, the yuckiness that goes along with these types of treatments. And, uh, but I know my mom is strong, not only in spirit, but in her faith. And uh, I do, do have lots of faith. But still keep those prayers coming, guys. And I will keep praying for you. I've had the wonderful opportunity to read and pray for many of you and some of the challenges that you're going through as well. So God bless you all. Enjoy this painting. And I can't wait to talk to you guys again. And hopefully it will be soon.
right guys so here's where I'm kind of wrapping it up and as you can see this is where I'm doing some of the grasses and by the way uh, these grasses I'm doing with Giro pastels G-I-R-A-U-L-T I think I got that right they're a French um, pastel company and I like them because they're medium to hard and uh, probably not as hard as a Rembrandt but um, harder than um, most of the real softies and they, that makes it really great for doing line work or, or grasses like this so I do love them so if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet this channel I hope you'll do so you just hit that red subscribe button also feel free to find us on Facebook Monet Cafe Art Group follow me on Instagram you'll see all the details in a minute and if you'd like to become a patron on my Patreon page you can see it there I promise I'll be bringing more content to that soon all right guys thanks so much happy happy painting